What was that last thing again? When you become zombies and you get into the workforce? Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's, the, that's the last bit, right? The, the thing of it is, uh, um, I'll just speak frankly, I think that Muslims uh, in this country, for a long time, we haven't been creative. We've not been creative. Our idea of a good career is limited to four or five things, and if your children are not graduating in these four to five fields, then they have failed in life. Right? They are, they are just, you know, what are you doing with your life? So if your son decides to, for example, get a bachelor's in history, you'll say, what are you doing? Is that why you brought you to America? To study history? No, no, no. Forget about history, worry about your future. <laughs> right? <laughs> and do computer science, and do like accounting, and you know, if you can't, you know, do, okay, no, no. First let's start with Jannatul Firdaus. Do med school, and then, you know, at least engineering, and if you can't do that, fine. A little bit lower, you know, kind of barzakhish, but you know, computer science. If you can't do CS, you can't be a programmer, at least do IT. Okay, fine, be an accountant. You know, oh, education, way at the bottom, education. <laughs> right, so we have these, like, we, we figure out that these are the careers that are successful, and we push those on to our kids. Listen, this is not the British Empire leaving Pakistan and India behind, and, uh, and the only careers left are the ones that the Brits left for us. This is not that anymore. There, this is a, really, I mean, I don't mean to be cliche, but it's a land of opportunity. Right, and there's so many creative fields that we could use Muslims in, and that you can, it's not just that it would be a great service to the community, but they can really be lucrative careers. So my first bit of advice would be, to first, you know, identify for yourself, and college is the time to do that, and high school is the early time to do that, identify for yourself, what are the subjects, and what are the areas of study or specialization that you find interesting, that you really like, genuinely like. And then in college, Find out, like, speak to professionals in that field, speak to counselors, advisors, and find out what kind of career paths are available in that field that you personally really, really like, and not, not just like, but you're good at. That, these are two things that are important. Because you can really like something, but you're no good at it. Right? Don't do that. Because <laughs> you won't get anywhere. And sometimes you're really good at something, but you don't like it at all. You're really great at it. You hate it though. And you go and do it anyway because you're good at it. And you know what happens? You're miserable your entire life. Because you hate going to work every day because you can't stand your job. Right? So it would be good, it would be, an, it would be an effort on your part to look for something A, that you really like doing, and B, that you're good at, and then pursue a career in that field, uh, inshaAllah ta'ala. And even if that doesn't happen, that's the ideal case, right? But even if that, that, that doesn't happen, have a career in which your life is not your career. Your life is not your career. I used to be in IT, back in the day, way before, you know, uh, this is, we're talking about the age of Pentiums and, you know, 386, you guys don't know what that is. Okay, anyway, right, when Windows was the thing, right, so, but when I was in IT, you know what happened? Co technology was constantly changing. So to keep up in your career, what did you have to do? You, you're at work when you're at work, and you're at work when you're home, so you can stay at work the next day. <laughs> to keep up with your career. So your, career, your, your work basically consumes you. And you have no energy, no time left to do anything else with your life. That is it, that's all you are. You ever seen people that work so hard, every time you talk to them, all they can talk about is work? That's all they can talk about. They can't think of talking about anything else. Why? Because that's all their life has become, unfortunately. They're just a means to make some multi-million dollars company some more money. <laughs> that's all they've become. Some, a cog in a machine. You have to have a career in which you have time left for yourself, for your family, for your community, for other things. A lot of people I know that were amazing in their MSA years. Man, these people were awesome. The moment their career started, they disappeared. We don't see, what happened to that guy? I don't know, you got a job. That's all I, last I heard of him, he got a job. That's what happened. They disappeared. We don't see them at masajid, we don't see them in programs, we don't see them you know, pursuing their, their, their study of deen. We don't, we don't see them. And in some, time, some cases it's understandable, you're busy with family and things, you know. But, you know, it, it's something you have to be cognizant of. Don't lose who you were. Don't lose who you were. And if, if your children see you not having any activities outside of your career, and doing the groceries, you know, they don't see you actively participating in wanting to learn the deen for yourself, in wanting to gain a better understanding, doing something for Islam, whether it be in the realm of da'wah or humanitarian work, or whatever it may be. If they don't see that, how are they going to get inspired, you know? So these, these would be a... a, a